But really, when it comes to pain, we want to do all we can. And we've talked about this before to reduce those signals on okay. our own, because right now our system is being overloaded and we're yeah. getting those pain signals from the brain down into that tissue saying pain, pain, pain. Welcome back to another episode from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Doc Jen. And I'm Dr. Dom. And we're talking about nerve blocks today because we've gotten questions on it. What is a nerve block? When is it really appropriate to get it? And when might you want to? Now, before we go into this, first of all, have you had a nerve block or been recommended to have a nerve block? Please comment below and let us know. And don't forget to subscribe because when you subscribe, you get to hear not only a lot more of these episodes where we really go into the education behind things, but we also have individual videos where we just talk about mobility and pain and exercises that you can do so you can keep feeling great within your body. So don't forget to subscribe. So essentially think of it like a local anesthetic with a corticosteroid kind of mixed in to a certain targeted area of either an area of nerves or just a nerve to really help to disperse and decrease the pain for a period of time. Because you can have things that are like a complete nerve block that is just blocking any sort of sensation. You can also have medications that will just target the sympathetic nervous system. You can have medications that it's not going to be a complete numbing, but it just really reduces the local sensation in the area. So there's a wide spectrum of what you might get if you're getting a nerve block, depending on the need or depending on what's going on. Right. And one of the most common ones, and probably the one that people are asking about when they ask about them, it's the non-surgical type of nerve block. And this is like your peripheral nerve block. It can last about 12 to 16 hours of really creating that numbness and not having that pain within that targeted nerve area. So we're gonna talk about when is it like most commonly used, you know, mm. then it is kind of one of the better options. And it doesn't only include <laughs> like medicine or pharmaceutical options. Like you can also actually have procedures like a neurectomy or a rhizotomy. Mm -hmm. Neurectomy meaning cutting part of the nerve. So that's generally done on peripheral nerves where they might cut a portion of a nerve that's really overactive or causing a lot of spasms. Or so they're completely destroying the nerve. Yeah, so they're completely mm -hmm. cutting and off. And that's the surgical one. All communication. Or a rhizotomy, which you might hear talked about when people are having really bad sciatic symptoms mm -hmm. or really, really bad low back symptoms. Sometimes they'll go in and try to do a rhizotomy, which rise meaning root. So they're actually cutting or burning <laughs> root. <laughs> cutting or burning little portions of that nerve root 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 <laughs> <Can't miss laughs> make, make fun of how i say root um so they're burning little portions of that nerve root right where it comes out of the back or the neck right. and those are like obviously then we're getting more into the extreme cases of things right yeah. where it, you've exhausted your options and that's usually when you go into more of the surgical type of nerve blocks and having these nerves actually destroyed is you've tried all the other methods. You've tried conservative treatment. You've done the physi the physical therapy and the chiropractic care and all of this stuff. And you're, it, I mean, no relief to the point of limiting your activities on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Another really, really common one that most people have probably heard of is an epidural, which yeah. is commonly talked about when we talk about pregnancy. That one is put right into the spinal canal. Mm -hmm. So it's just injected right into your cerebral spinal fluid and that completely blocks sensation. But if you've ever talked to people who, because you're, you're awake while that's going mm -hmm. on. And so if you have ever talked to people who've had that, you can still feel different pressures and moving um, sometimes. It depends on the level of the epidural. There's, Absolutely. there's different levels of the epidural. Absolutely. But um, so some might completely block all sensation yeah. but i've heard of other people saying like i could deal different pressures and stuff now we're getting into the non-surgical types we have the epidural type we also have the spinal one and we also have the peripheral nerve so those are the other ones that are going to be outside of the surgical type where you're awake and you're just hitting on a specific area where the spinal one you're really getting into more of like the fluids that are surrounding the spinal cord it's not great for things like bleeding or pre-existing sensory or motor disorders <laughs> any nerve block yeah or infection, which if you have an infection in an area, it isn't going to really do anything for that. Well, it, it's just not advice. If you have an infection where you're where you would potentially get the nerve block, right? Not advice. 
So those are things to really look out for, but that's kind of on the extreme case where in general, there's not, again, that many adverse side effects that are happening with this. However, it's also not something that's lasting forever. And I think that's yeah. something that's really important to go over and note as well, because just because you get something done doesn't mean that your pain is now gone. Yeah. And I think when they talk about not having many risks or adverse side effects, we're talking about in the immediate. So, right. so nerve blocks going to wear off and you're not going to have a ton of adverse side effects. But when we think about what that's doing, so say we get a nerve block in the arm, like it's just blunting or stopping the communication of what the brain is telling that arm, right? So if you're in extreme pain and you have this nerve block, it's going to stop the messaging or the signaling from the brain to the arm. So what's that doing in that amount of time? How does the brain respond or react to that? They're saying like, hey, I'm not getting any feedback from the arm. Like, what do I do? Does the brain start to increase its signaling to try and get messages through? Does it decrease the signaling and we don't, everyone's brain responds a little different to these types of things, especially in extreme cases, if you're having persisting pain or chronic pain disorders. Mm -hmm. Like I've heard of people who've gotten something like a rhizotomy or gotten a nerve block in the back and it helped immensely. It mm -hmm. gave them relief. It allowed them to get movement and start to do different core stabilization and mobility that they've been needing to do. And then I've heard the opposite where people mm -hmm. would get a rhizotomy or a nerve block and it might feel different in the immediate or they might get an initial relief, but then it kind of compounds down the road. So it's really tough for us to understand how our nervous system is going to react to these things. But really, when it comes to pain, we want to do all we can. And we've talked about this before to reduce those signals on mm -hmm. our own, because right now our system is being overloaded and we're getting yeah. those pain signals from the brain down into that tissue saying pain, pain, pain and it's not yeah. able to inhibit. And so we have to find ways that can naturally start to inhibit those signals. And yes, you know, the nerve block might do that for a temporary time, but what happens after that wears off? And then what are we telling our system? Are we getting enough sleep? Are we doing our breath practices to try to reduce those signals and get into our parasympathetic? Are we getting good nutrients and fueling our body so that it doesn't feel like it's running on, <laughs> on nothing or on fumes? And when we start to really focus on that and do the movement that that we can at least try to do in the moment, yeah. it's gonna help to start to reduce those signals. And especially with a lot of these nerve disorders, many people get to the point where it's, it's a persistent or a consistent or chronic issue. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just the peripheral nerve that is the issue sometimes. We start to develop these pain patterns in our brain where one area of the sensory cortex is communicating to the thalamus, which is communicating to our memory centers, and then it sends down more pain. And so how do we start to reprogram and rewire what's going on up in the cortex, up in the brain? That's going to take some of these things that Jen has been talking about. Mm -hmm changing our systemic behaviors. Research has shown that the benefit and what I think is a great benefit of doing these peripheral nerve blocks or, or nerve blocks in general is that you're reducing the, the need to rely on opioids. And mm -hmm. we know that's an issue, especially in the U.S. So if we can reduce the, the need to rely on opioids as the solution for pain, well, then I'm for it, you know. But let's continue to see, OK, what else can I do to help my system as a whole? And movement, it, I mean, we're always going to be proponents of movement because yeah. it's the thing that moves us forward. It's the thing that is going to help us through life. Don't be afraid to try a different physical therapist. We've talked about this before, too. If conservative treatment didn't help, there's a reason that someone just wasn't seeing you, meeting you where you were at, or really working with you on the full journey, the full body aspect of what it entails to do physical therapy. But there are a lot of areas in medicine that these have been found to be very beneficial and help people get procedures that we otherwise probably couldn't. Like, mm -hmm. like in labor and delivery, the epidural, like we mentioned, is super popular. Other surgical related pain, so getting in for surgery, like one, we might do a nerve block in surgery, but then if you're having a lot of post-surgical pain, yeah, you might they, do one after surgery. They might just do one after surgery to mm -hmm. keep that pain lower. Like I've seen that a lot of times, or when people get joint replacements, they might mm -hmm. have a nerve block that lasts for 24 to 48 hours afterwards. Mm -hmm. Cancer-related pain, so people who are having really severe cancer-related pain or arthritic pain, they can also be very beneficial for those. I mean, overall, we just want to keep you moving. So communicate with your physician, F figure out what's best for you and your lifestyle, but understand the scope of what it does. Hopefully this just helped you to understand a little bit more. Thanks again for tuning in for another PT Pearl. If you really liked what you heard or have other questions, please comment below, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell so you get notifications whenever we come out with new videos. And we'll see you next time on the Optimal Body Podcast.